world, in fact, among anybody who's got their eyes open. You talk about the Obama administration and how the U.S. actions right now um, could be infuriating the Muslim world, the Arab world. The Obama administration has supported the Tunisians, has supported the Egyptians, has supported the Libyans in the so-called Arab Spring. The Palestinians have officially submitted an application for UN membership and statehood. The U.S. says that they will cast a veto against it if they have to because they believe that direct negotiations should take place between Palestine and Israel before there's an independent Palestine. Well, first of all, I have to make a qualification. The United States and its Western allies did not support the Egyptian and Tunisian uh, revolutions. They opposed them. They, they backed the dictator, and, and Tunisia was mostly France. Mm -hmm. It's their colony, mm -hmm. fix colony, and Egypt was the United States and Britain. Mm -hmm. They supported the dictators until the last minute and when the army turned against them and it was no longer possible to support them, right. then they said, okay, one, democracy's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then they moved to try to ensure that the regimes would stay pretty much as they were. And so it's a very old pattern. But putting that aside, it's true that the United States announced that it would cast a veto. For about 35 years, uh, the United States and Israel have been rejecting a political settlement that is supported by virtually the entire world. Uh, the Arab League, uh, the Organization of Islamic States, which includes Iran, uh, Hamas supports it. Uh, almost no relevant party uh, disagrees with it, except that the United States and Israel won't let it happen. How about the fact that Egypt right now and Turkey have really severed their relations with Israel? See, that's an effect of the Arab Spring. What that, what's happened, there are changes in the world. What's happening is Israel's getting far more isolated, meaning the U.S. is getting far more isolated. For example, a couple of months ago, there was a meeting of the, the oligarchs, you know, people who pretty much own the economy. They, they warned the government that they better accept something like this resolution because they said otherwise Israel will be, as they put it, South Africanized. Uh, even more isolated, you know, boycotts, refusal to load ships, and so on, and our economy will collapse. Now, it's interesting that Israel's reacting pretty much the way South Africa did. If you look back at the history, by about 1960, we have the records. The South African foreign minister called in the American ambassador and described this to him and said, we don't really care as long as you back us, because you're the one vote that matters. And that's how it worked out. Uh, right through the 1980s, by the 1980s, uh, UN embargo, uh, UN embargo, uh, corporations were pulling out uh, uh, sanctions all over, boycotts. Uh, they were doing fine. Uh, the Reagan administration was backing them. Uh, and as long as the U.S. was supporting them, nothing happened. Then the U.S. withdrew support, and almost instantly apartheid collapsed. So you're saying it's in Israel's best interest and possibly the U.S. Uh, to so allow this Palestinian U.N. membership and uh, statehood? Look, I thought for 35 years that uh, the same story, the change same story is now that it's been for f almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. There's a choice between security and expansion. Mm -hmm. Very clear choice. Now, Israel is like other states. It's preferring, it had for since the early 70s, it's had a choice between security and expansion. It can have peace but not with expansion into the territories, which incidentally is recognized to be criminal by everyone, including Israel. Uh, they can get away with it as long as the most powerful state in the world backs them, and as long as Europe goes along. Europe is remarkably cowardly. They may not like this, but they don't like to step on the toenails of the master, so they go along. So you notice the quartet has backed the United States. They picked Tony Blair, you know, I don't have to comment on him, but they, they might as well have picked George Bush to, uh, uh, to bring the message, uh, do what the United States tells you, uh, stop this nonsense about statehood and go back to negotiations. That's where we now stand. It's up to the people in the advanced industrial countries to compel their governments to go along with the world. Professor Chomsky, thank you very much for your time. Yeah.